Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be learning about cosine similarity with text using Python. And we're going to be looking at two different ways of doing this. The first way will be through TF-IDF Vectorizer, which is a sklearn library. And the second way will be through using Spacey, which is a great uh, resource for NLP in Python. Let's start off with the cosine similarity using TF-IDF Vectorizer. Links included right here if you want to go look at the documentation. I highly recommend it. Um, but to start off, we're just, we're just going to create two very simple sentences that we'll be comparing in this video. Uh, the first one, I love playing basketball. The second one, I love playing soccer and basketball. So we can already assume that they're going to be pretty similar. After creating those sentences and saving them as variables, we are going to save them into a list because that is what will be plugged into the TF-IDF vectorizer object as an argument. And that's what we're going to do down here. So we have to import the library and create the object right here. And then after doing that, we can compare, we can vectorize them by plugging that list into the fit transform method of TF-IDF vectorizer. So go ahead and run that. And then down here, now that they've been vectorized, we can go ahead and look at the, the words. And each word within those texts is going to be assigned a value. And there is an attribute in TF-IDF vectorizer that is vocabulary underscore. And this will show you each word and the value that was assigned to it. That's what we're looking at right here. So for example, the word love was assigned to playing three basketball, one, and so on. Now if we go down here, we're going to print out the matrix itself and take a look at that and what it looks like. So anything with zero in the first index of the parentheses is going to be for the first sentence, and one will be the second sentence. And then in the second part of the parentheses, the value corresponds to the word. So for example, one is basketball, three is playing, and two will be love. So we know that that's the first sentence, love, playing, basketball. With TF-IDF vectorizer, the word I gets taken out because it is not going to be a very relevant or useful word for the model. And then if you go down and look at the second sentence, you can see that, for example, soccer is number four and zero is and. And then these values right here are the IDF values. So basically how valuable that word is in our model. And we're not going to go into that a lot today because basically we mostly just wanted to use TF-IDF vectorizer for creating a vector. Okay, so now that we've created a vector, we can now compare, we can now determine similarity using a cosine similarity library from sklearn. Now, as a little bit of um, conceptual theory behind this, um, basically you can think of it as once we have turned a sentence into a vector, you can theoretically plot those two vectors on a graph and then in order to see how similar they are, we can measure the angle between the two. If they are parallel to each other or on top of each other, we know that they're almost identical. And the wider the angle between the two, the more different they're going to be. The cosine comes in because that converts that angle value into a value between 0 and 1, which is a lot more intuitive to determine similarity. We don't need to worry so much about the trig that goes on in this because we already have these libraries built in for us. We just have to understand how to use these libraries. But in case you're interested in a little bit of the math behind it, that's a very, very, very simple explanation of what's happening. So let's go ahead and run that. We're going to save the similarity score as this variable. And basically, you just have to plug the matrix into the cosine similarity. And there you have it. So it's 65. So we can see that it's 
higher than 50, so there is definitely some similarity there with some small differences, as we can see from those two texts. It's pretty obvious. That's the first method using TF-IDF vectorizer. Let's move on to the second one, which is using Spacey. Again, I've included the link here, so you can go check out the documentation. We are going to import Spacey and then bring in this um, pre-trained pipeline of the English language and save it out as a variable called NLP. This will, Spacey can be used for a lot of different NLP techniques, but we're going to use it to vectorize these sentences. So once again, we have some sentences. Notice they're a little bit different than the first ones, but pretty close. I just wanted to change it up for fun. Um, now that we have these two sentences created and saved as variables, we can vectorize them, which is what we're doing down here. This step. And then if we go down to the next step, view vectors, we can look at the first 10 and we can also see how long these vectors actually are, how many objects are in these vectors. All right, so we can see the first 10. These numbers don't mean too much to me, um, but we can see that the length is 300. This is the first sentence. Let's look at the sen second sentence. Look similar. Notice that they're the same length. Okay. Now all we have to do is use the similarity method to compare the two. Um, so we'll save that out as a variable called text similarity and then plug in the second sentence vector or you could switch it around, doesn't matter, into here and then run that. You can see that the score is 96. Now, um, keep in mind that these two techniques, TF-IDF vectorizer and spacey, are not two ways, they're not equal. So Spacey will use context a lot better than TF-IDF vectorizer, for example, whereas TF-IDF vectorizer only looks at the vectors and matrices created from term frequency. Spacey uses context a little bit more, so you're going to get slightly different scores, and albeit these are slightly different sentences. But I just wanted to point that out, that um, they're not equal. There are differences, there are pros and cons, um, and you have to weigh those out. But that's two ways here that we've went through to calculate and determine similarity between texts. Now that you understand the principle, hopefully you can go and apply it to a more realistic real-world example. Thank you, and I hope this was helpful.